Hi and welcome to the part two of this test. Sorry it's long overdue. It just takes me a lot of time to actually get to it. Um, this is the part two where we're testing the lower Umze, um, lens with the anamorphic ray elements and against the Leica Sumocrons and the Canon CNEs. There'll be a part three for this video also where we'll actually compare the Canon CNEs and the Canon Sumirays. And um, yeah, but um, shout out to Yinka Edwards who actually made the Leica Sumocrons for us available to be able to test it in this video i would leave his contact information and details should you need to rent it because um simacrons are amazing lens like you can see from the shot we're actually currently viewing with the single bokeh and the sharpness and the fall of that happens across the field you can see how the lens tends to possess a, char a door tone character of cool shadows and also like um, warm um mid tones now this is the Canon CNE on a T2 um, and um, you could see how they all compare together similar because we're actually testing the same focal what we did was that we had to um, test the same focal length across that were actually um, the same across um, the, um, the lenses we're testing so we could get as close as possible to Unisim in terms of what we're testing now you could see all three of them stack up on 24 25 and the 25 T2.9 can see like um, the lower has um, an interesting warmth that, and uh, this whole fall off soft focus fall off but the bulk is not large I'm I'm guessing that that's attributed to the fact that um, it's the stacking of the zoom element as opposed to the Leica Sumocrons and also you could see how the lower attempts to flare on the 25 mil which you could notice that um, it doesn't have too much it has a cold shadow and also like elements and some other interesting characteristics that actually comes with the flare um, when we um, go to the Leica Sumocrons we will see this strong very blue push that happens in the shadows that's not actually contaminating the skin tones and I really think that's really beautiful because it just reminds me of um, um, certain things I would do like um, if I was supposed to shoot like a rom-com this would my go-to glass because of some of the um, tones that I already built into the glass itself and actually built into because right now there's just um, a lot of transformation and that's it there's no color correction you can dial out this blue out of the shadows in color correction if you think that that's too much the CN is more neutral like you can actually see it just possesses a neutral tone and it's great because it gives you a base that you could actually start building and stacking characters using the filters in front of the lens to be able to create your own characteristics but it may not affect the flare that much though because um, more, I think more of the flare um, elements have to do with internal structure and not actually um, what's in front of the glass because that could probably just end up diffusing and scattering light and doing stuff which may not may or may not be the desired intent just in case though but you can see how the summochrome has cold shadows the Leica has subdued um, till in the shadows and uh, um, the Lao actually was the one that had subdued till in the shadows which you can actually see here one thing I like about the Lao lens is how it pulls the background in um, it doesn't have the big bokeh elements like uh, the prime has i'm guessing that's due to the amount of glass that the actual elements that's actually in the beauty of the lens um there's this compression that happens between the tree and the chair when you actually compare it you can see here how the chairs and the trees like push back in the same 35 and you can see the larger bokeh elements and you can see that cool tone in the shadows and the warm skin which is really 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 pleasing and focus fall off and you can see how you have like cut eye bokeh towards the edge of the frame while at the center of the frame the bokeh is more consistent and secular um, same thing of course with the canon but it's more neutral and color tone it's a very much neutral glass as opposed to um, the Sumocron itself or the Lawa. The Lawa leans more to the vintage. The Sumocron is somewhere in between. That's how it characterizes it. And the Canon is more clinically clean. You get, and all of them have their own individual use. You can see how fairly sharp it is and how they actually um, respond favorably. Like from what I'm seeing on this image, I'm gravitating more to the Lawa though. I'm guessing it's due to the warm element because if you look at the previous test, without a warm element, the glass just looks bare like 
but with the wear element attached there's this it adds both a color shift and also some kind of softness that actually happens like it's still um, fairly sharp it's um and but it's not like as as sharp or as very harsh as it was i think that's the, i don't know the correct word to actually use to attribute that effect but i'm watching this off the larger screen i i possess in 4k so some of these details jump at me if i had like a 20 feet projector that'd be like another place to actually check out um, um this test so you can actually see as for chromatic abrasions though during the high contrast elements during the edges they did not exhibit anyone in this test though but i do know um as we progress more interestingly the glass tends to um um gets to like for the lower the glass gets to like fall off on the very far end of the zoom like when that happens but for the primes they all perform pristine well even on the 1 to 5 like um they just hold their own very well and that's like interesting because um if you actually get to stop down the lower on the 100 mm end which it actually has poor performance like a t4 most of that softness just goes away and you actually have like a very sharp pristine glass but their flares become more interesting as for the zoom lens because as you go more into the telephoto region you get less characteristics more of it's a lot more control there's no much veiling or light leaks or elements it just gets more controlled now we are at the 50 we can see the bokeh is not fully circular we could see a little bit of stop um stop sign shapes that's actually there but we could see how it meshes into the background and how the rendition of the focus across the screen when it goes back to focus just falls off of the character in a very soft and cinematic way at least from from what i can see when um as I'm watching this, you can see how it holds. But the Summercrum itself, um, you can see how fairly sharp it is on the black skin, and how how it actually um, the the tones built into the glass comes in really, really beautiful. You can see the cat eye shape bokeh now on the 50 focal length, and you can see how it actually holds the highlights when compared to the Canon CNEs, who's a lot way, way, way much neutral. You get this actually representing um, the characteristics of what was shot in terms of white balance or true to eye. You get how close it was to what was shot as opposed to um, the color shift that has been introduced by the glass element. This just goes to show that um, there's another layer of influence that we could influence our images by the glass choices and which is why um, we do this test to discover we get to see happy accidents or things we may like or may not like you get and tells us why and when we could use each tools for what we intend to do you get and most of this was shot at the low shot throughout wide open um, but the canons they could go further to like a t12 same I, I think the Leica stops as a t2 but i just kept for for um, fair comparison and consistency i left the lower wide open and um left the um, prime glasses at t2 so that we could actually track consistency between um the prime set against the zoom you get you can see how um how it rolls off the highlight in this flare test and how you can see that the clipping doesn't just falls off in um in the lav then also that also happens in the leica sumocrons you get it still doesn't fall off it does this very beautiful role of like you can see how it goes into the light source that you do not it doesn't just fall off the edge like a digital signal you get i wouldn't say it is as much filmic because um looking at film film has some green element that actually also plays out that makes it a little more organic but in this place it doesn't feel like digital clipping you do not feel that even on the cnes the canon cnes the same thing happens you do not feel that you just have this smooth veiling fall off that actually happens um <coughs> On the highlight they actually present all beautiful like all three lenses present very beautiful roll off so it now comes down to okay so what tool will be right for um, me or depending on the project I'm shooting what tool am I going to be bringing to the game that will actually help push the story intent further and I believe that's where as creators we actually um, lean forward like how can we bring interesting characteristics into the image that will be able to push the story more further to the vision of the director or to the vision of the story itself and <clears throat> 
making all that come together with all these technical choices uh, part of the things we explore now this is the 70 mil um, one of the favorite um, close-up focal lengths because the characters were like 12 feet away from the camera and here you get to obviously see the lens compression I'm talking about how it actually pulls the character in when you compare it against um, the 75 mil from the um, um, Leica Sumacron and also the 85 mil from the um, Canon CNEs. You get to see that compression I'm talking about. It just brings the space, pulls the background in a little bit closer. You get. Um, there was a test back then that Shane um, um, did, which actually was actually obvious, um, where we could see that Leica had a different compression on the horizontal lens of the face. But in this test here, I don't think that that's. Um, apparent due to the comparison because the Lawa is actually squeezing on the 231 using the rear anamorphic element so um, compared to the very subtle squeeze that happens on the Sumocrons um, it's not that obvious to notice now on the shirt you can see now we now start getting some chromatic aberration on the on the glass like as we pull in further because we're not having like high contrast edges and which is not um, that worse to actually you could actually clean that up if you if you actually choose to because some of the things are easily down that in color correction and you could actually move forward from it so it's pretty interesting how um, um, different manufacturers have different secret sauce that you could just um, um, that contributes to the image aesthetically and this goes a long way to actually influence um, of the show not just the filter you put in front of me this lens has no promise has nothing other than just bare glass in front of them and we can see how varying the characteristics effect of each manufacturer's glass is on the same image and um, and this just um, speaks to um, um, the varying amount of genuine choices that now exist in the sphere you get the Canon cost uh, about what 24 grand to actually pick up like the full set. The Sumacron costs somewhere from um, 55, um, 5,000 on the used market to as high as probably 70 something thousand to get like a set on the used market. And the La costs somewhere around um, um, 6,000, 8,500 or 800, depending on your, where you are shipping and tax. And on screen, when the image comes like on screen you can tell you can tell like there's a difference but the difference is not like a a scenario from texture and quality it just comes to it just speaks to the fact that um in this day and age it's almost no excuse for creating beautiful images because a lot they have like an amazing design that actually speaks to the characteristics of of the image itself that they actually um out there which could be a great entrant and it's not just a pushover tool from what you could see in these images like it's clearly and totally holding its own and also the Sumacrons themselves is not falling short because they are super amazing and beautiful with their dual tone characteristics and how the flare and the canon themselves are being in the neutral tone that gives you like a, a blank canvas you can actually now start doing layering and stacking because it, it, it lends like a lot that's already um, it's beautiful you would have to be careful and not just slap a soft effects on it or whatever you do you have to be careful of the strength because you could totally throw the lens out of whack because the lens itself is really really pretty this is the 100 mil that i said um, at t2.9 you can see how soft it gets when whereas if you get like stuck down in the lens you get it gets it becomes way much sharper and it's it's quite interesting that in this day and age that um, um high quality glass has now become becoming ready available so um if there's anything i'll meet it if there's any questions you have i would look forward to your thoughts and um, as soon as i catch a quick break i'll be able to put out a part three where we can compare the summary rays against the cnes and see what are the dna differences you can actually extract from both lenses and um yes and, and like the value on screen against um, um the intent the creative intent that would be one to use as glasses so Big shout out again to Yinka for providing the Leica Summer Crunch for us to be able to use for this test. And um, yes, I would look forward to your comments. Tell me what you think. If you do like content like this, please subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment below. I'll, be do, I'll do my sure best to answer them as quick as possible. If you do have uh, any remarks or 
if you hate the video leave it a thumbs down if you like the video leave it a thumbs up until next time because the test is just gonna wrap up i'll leave you in a bit to actually like just go with it till the end um and we'll see ourselves again okay until then peace out thank you very much